Thank you. Hello, my name is Arnold Menas. I'm uh, coming from the publication world, and uh, my last 10 years I've been, I've been focused on the business development project uh, of it. But uh, my, main, my main background is a uh, communication engineer, and uh, this year I have also restarted my, uh, my journey within like an engineer. So I started the PhD the studies in communications. Uh, I'm a beginner in TIT, so I uh, wouldn't claim that I'm an expert, highly expert in 5G, but uh, that's something I wish to become. So, uh, and for today, uh, for today, I have put together uh, some information which is mainly uh, open, uh, open source, now, but uh, publicly available. And uh, just to give the uh, content, uh, what is the 5G? How we are looking on it as a technology, as a connectivity technology, not only, and have to be related to the PIT or geospatial information technology. So I then for me today is uh, give a bit uh, a, a little bit about the 5G, probably information you have heard already a lot, because marketing has been working for 5G for a while. And uh, then uh, then some uh, stuff subject on the 5G rollouts, including Latvia, uh, what is the real situation, what we can expect when we see on our phones the 5G uh, connectivity for today, and uh, then about the uh, use cases which is most popular in terms of 5G, and uh, maybe some of them are directly or not, or not so directly connected with GIT, and uh, uh, so yeah, promises additionally the connectivity by G and G, and uh, uh, finally uh, also a vision of 5G from satellites. I will explain how it looks from the technical uh, point of view. Uh, in my presentation, there will be some uh, technical operations. So if you if you are not familiar, just let me know. I will try to explain. But yeah, I, I will try to keep it simple. So uh, this is very popular uh, picture. In a one or the other way, it can be presented the basically the triangle of 5G and the three main things of 5G can bring is uh, extensive, extensive mobile broadband, ultra reliable, uh, low latency, and massive machine type communication. Uh, what does it mean? I mean, uh, it basically means that 5G as technology is designed to support uh, as wide uh, use cases, as, as widely needed use cases as possible. Starting from indoor connectivity, outdoor connectivity, having urban connectivity, uh, extreme coverage connectivity, and so on. And uh, for example, in terms of GIT, as it was mentioned also in the opening sessions, that uh, there there are need of ground uh, ground sensor data to be mapped together with the data which comes from satellite, and that gives more details in the uh, geospatial information. So 5G uh, can serve on that part, because uh, uh, when we go to massive machine communication, the uh, primary goal of the technology is to provide connectivity uh, is, uh, uh, by taking the power as much as possible from the sensor, so making the sensor capable to work in the environment for a for longer period of time, uh, up to years. But okay, uh, so move forward. Uh, uh, when we move forward, I will just do mapping 5G versus 4G. What is the difference? Uh, basically, uh, the 5G we are expecting like 10 times more speed, maximum speed, uh, less power consumption, higher mobility, so we can uh, use the 5G connectivity on the airplanes and uh, uh, very, very fast uh, drones or something. Uh, because it's up to 500 kilometers per hour, uh, a bigger, uh, bigger uh, amount of uh, devices in, uh, in some obstructed uh, area, uh, limited area, would be more precisely. And uh, basically, th uh, that uh, that visualization gives uh, like uh, feeling where the 5G is uh, willing to update uh, compared by 4G. And uh, Going a bit further uh, in terms of rollouts, uh, first thing, uh, first thing, uh, what I wanted to partly explain is uh, how the 5G is developed. So, 5G network technology is developed based on uh, standards, and the standards are published and uh, uh, like uh, developed by an organization called uh, Third 
first generation pro uh, partner projects, 3GPP. And uh, the standards, which are primarily associated with the 5G, is uh, from release 15 up to release 17. And the release 18, which is on that side, uh, it's already uh, a bit above 5G and uh, on the way to the city. So, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, releases, you can see that there is a timeline. For example, release 17 uh, was finalized on 2022. But uh, 2022 doesn't mean that we get a uh, 5G network ready for release 17. It means that standard is there, and on average it will take more than two years when we get the 5G ready equipment, uh, network equipment uh, from the vendors, network vendors, and then one year more uh, from user equipment vendors uh, when they implement that standard update to their equipment the standard release 17. So what we're expecting right now, for example, in Latvia we have 5G, uh, all over the world there is uh, uh, more active or passive uh, developments of 5G networks, but mainly those networks are released in team. And uh, basically they are uh, within the architecture which is called non-standalone 5G network. And uh, such kind of architecture is uh, giving only one update when we compare 5G to 4G. It's, uh, it's uh, bigger bandwidth, and then bigger bandwidth only on the uh, downlink side, not on the uplink side. But uh, I will try to explain uh, very shortly, briefly, about uh, what is the difference between NSA and NSA, non standalone and standalone networks. Uh, so uh, here you can see uh, seven options uh, how the 5G network can be, the six options within the numbering. Uh, it's one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, yeah, five, seven, without six, but that. Uh, uh, so uh, then, uh, those those elements which are, which are in the gray, those are 4G network elements. The elements which are in the red, those are 5G network elements. And uh, bas basically when it comes for the, the, the developments of 5G right now, or uh, what we have in our home right now, it's an option three when you see that uh, all the new radio base station is red and everything else is from, from power 4G technology. And uh, when we are talking about those expectations and uh, promises for 5G is uh, like uh, saying to us that uh, there will be uh, higher speed, lower latency, uh, well, like massive machine type communication, Basically, we are speaking about the option two, at least option four, uh, which is uh, uh, very rarely uh, available now in the world. Mainly operators are uh, having NSA option three developments. So, uh, moving forward, uh, 5G also, uh, there's a different needs of, uh, and uh, opinions about the 5G. Well, one of them we heard already that, uh, about the radiation. So, but uh, nevertheless, the other, the other uh, option, uh, opinion is that with the 5G, we will need to have a lot of base stations. If we compare the technology with 4G, uh, there's opinion, uh, opinion that there will be like 10 times more base stations needed to provide the same coverage. And it's not true, uh, because, I mean, if we are using the high band, uh, which is on the uh, left-hand side for me, uh, so uh, that, of course, if we are using the millimeter wave uh, uh, base stations, which are working up to 26 to uh, 28 gigahertz, and can be even uh, higher, and which are dedicated to be uh, use in the indoors or very small small areas uh, with the coverage for 300 meters is true, but basically you use high uh, bandwidth only in the use cases when you really need very uh, extremely high bandwidth. I mean, uh, it could be factories, it could be like uh, you can uh, provide a millimeter wave coverage for the roads if you are uh, talking about the autonomous vehicles and so on, but at the same time, uh, the 5G technology have also the low, low band frequencies, which is, for example, in Latvia we are using 700 megahertz, 
or in the United States, it's 600, and basically that frequency is uh, providing coverage. Uh, and that, uh, with the one base station, you can provide uh, that wider coverage if you prepare it the base station. And the mostly used uh, frequency bands, of course, are mid bands, uh, which are 3.5, 3.8 uh, frequencies, and those are giving like complement between the coverage and speed. But uh, mainly, mainly this uh, assumption that, that there will be need of uh, a lot of base station, it's not so straightforward, and I would say it's not right. Okay, uh, let's go further with the use cases. So uh, there is uh, different use cases for uh, which 5G is looking for to update them and to improve them. And uh, here are a couple of them. Virtual reality, augmented reality, large-scale uh, large mapping, which, uh, which could be directly connected to the GIT, and uh, autonomous vehicles. So uh, uh, from, from the, those use cases, uh, the closest one and most real for now is since the virtual reality, augmented reality use case. And I will explain why. So, uh, this is an announcement which was done by Apple in, on Monday this week. So uh, basically we see that uh, Vision Pro, uh, Google's uh, extended reality, when you put together virtual and augmented reality, you call it extended reality. So uh, uh, extended reality Google's are uh, announced by one of the world's leading uh, IT manufacturers, uh, Apple, and, but you can see they are still a very big one, and they even have a cable. But we know that the cable, I mean, there's a poor information about the Google's available for now. But what we know, uh, what we know for now uh, is that uh, the cable was probably used for power mount, to provide power for Google's, uh, and uh, the connectivity is Wi-Fi, or at least I didn't find that the, it would have built-in 5G. But uh, why should it have 5G? So what 5G can do for uh, XR, XR industry or metaverse industry uh, vision? So uh, 5G can make those Googles become more lighter and more user friendly because 5G is a very uh, high-end technology. Uh, uh, 5G can up, up, up on a lot of processing uh, activities from the Googles to the other side of the network, to the servers. So basically, allowing Google to become lighter, uh, consume less power, uh, and do only the, uh, the things which are uh, strictly needed on the Google side. side. So, and this is the use case which we are heavily interested also here in Latvia. Here are some pictures from an uh, from, uh, event which was NATO event. NATO has an organization called uh, Align Command Transformation, which is basically their innovation unit. And uh, LMP, together with the Ministry of Defense of Latvia, uh, hosted that event in the military base others where we have a military 5G test site. And uh, the use case, which was uh, experimented with and tested, was specifically virtual and augmented reality for military system trainings and maintenance. So, uh, and uh, when we go further, what, what 5G can bring for, for this use case, one of the things is, uh, of course, the connectivity, bandwidth, uh, edge computing. But another thing is uh, also it could improve positioning. This picture shows that uh, it's not about 5G, that picture. It's about very precise GPS positioning where a couple of GPS antennas are used. But the fact is what I wanted to show here is uh, that this use case also future metaverse uh, cons uh, concept uh, it it requires to have a facility position the equipment as for example side also on the vertical uh, plane and it, it requires to improve the uh, precision of the position positioning and also to have a capability to do positioning not only out of the GPS but also indoors. So uh, basically, this is additional added volume that 5 g can bring uh, for the uh, uh, for the industry of metaverse uh, or XR. And uh, when it comes to the positioning, uh, the same release is to 
spread, uh, which I am representing uh, before. So release 15, release 16, release 17 and 18. Uh, you can see the precision of the, uh, of the party positioning available in a, or planned in each of the release. So uh, uh, for now, when we have release 15, it's not so visible and we cannot uh, use it very practically because it's, uh, it's not so precise. Uh, when it comes to 16, 17, the precision is uh, becoming to centimeters, and uh, but the release 18, which as I mentioned, is already the way forward to the sixth interval, and uh, it's expected that the precision of uh, 5G positioning in indoors could be uh, up to one centimeter, down to one centimeter, and uh, outdoors down to 10 centimeters. Of course, everything is depending on the, how you customize the network, and, uh, and which frequencies you are using, and uh, is the positioning the main thing what the network is, the network architecture is good for a specific place. And here is uh, a bit uh, technical slide, but uh, just to give the impression of the methods what uh, 5G brings in for positioning point of view. Position the object in the inner environment as in indoor, also outdoor. So there is a different new uh, uh, information in the network which helps to do that precise positioning. My favorite one is the downlink time, uh, uh, time differentiation of arrival, uh, which is uh, in the middle of the above line. So and, uh, that, that positioning method uh, is promising that the user equipment like a mobile phone will be able to know its position from network uh, data without letting know the network that uh, the, the device is doing position. Meaning that you are you are positioning yourself, but you are not sharing that your position with the uh, other uh, other uh, owners of the infrastructure or or uh, yeah, vendors. So and uh, what are those? Uh, what those like things which are coming together with the 5G and uh, geospatial information technologies. Uh, first of all, 5G, uh, identically as a 4G and also 3G, is heavily in need of geospatial information because when we are planning the network coverage, we are using the maps. So to understand what kind of environment is in a specific place, what kind of frequencies to use, how far should be the mass and so on. Uh, but 5G is bringing additionally uh, so uh, 5G is having more frequencies, so it's become more difficult and uh, more like uh, in details you need to plan that uh, things to provide the needed coverage. And with the use cases like for, the, for example drones, uh, there's becoming new tasks you need to in air. And it's totally different uh, to, to forecast how that radio frequency will propagate in the air uh, uh, if you compare with the terrain. So uh, all those things are heavily depending on geospatial information. And uh, so uh, 5G is in need of uh, GIT. That's, that's my claim in this, uh, this slide. Uh, but from, uh, uh, but from GIT, what GIT can uh, benefit uh, from 5G is uh, terrestrial data. I'm very sorry about the picture, which is not very uh, nature friendly, as, uh, as uh, the camera is agreed to uh, put to the tree, not in the right way. But nevertheless, what I wanted to show is uh, that uh, sensors, which, are, uh, which could be deployed in different areas, where, for example, fixed power lines are not available, uh, that's something what uh, 5G is uh, targeting to, to provide the connectivity for such sensors uh, and provide in a way so the sensors uh, are capable to operate with their battery for some period of time and you don't need to think about it. some fixed infrastructure around that. You just put the sensors where you need it and you have information from them for a while. Uh, up to years, uh, that's something uh, which is vision to the 5G. Uh, when it comes, we'll see. Uh, and just for conclusion, as I mentioned, uh, that there is a lot of developments and ideas, and 3GPD, the standardization organization, is working 
for the standard to do. Someday, allow 5G new radio signal to be received from the satellite, meaning that uh, basically uh, 5G from the satellites to your phone uh, uh, instead of the base stations that we have now uh, on terrestrial uh, fiber. So uh, it's of course it, uh, when it happens, it will be a huge business changer also for us as an operator. Uh, but uh, I mean, it brings also a lot of opportunities in terms of coverage where, where the terrestrial infrastructure uh, is hard to provide. Uh, and uh, just uh, there are some examples uh, of developments which are happening already. And this is the report from DSA uh, from last month. So uh, everything is happening. And uh, if, if you look from the technical point of view, uh, that uh, basically there are different uh, steps how 5G are going to the satellite constellations. And uh, the main goal is to get to the position of D when uh, Gino B or 5G base station is, uh, is installed on the satellite, uh, for example, low Earth orbit, and to provide the coverage from there. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for explaining 5G to us. Uh, we have some questions as well on Slido I already saw. So my first question, of course, is you know, there's been a lot of marketing hype about 5G. And, you know, I was expecting that I'd be able to do uh, remote surgery in a self driving car right now, but that hasn't happened. So it's that's the reason why it's not happening. You know, right? No, but uh, I mean, uh, the, as I mentioned, uh, Also, 
Yeah, uh, depends on the party, but in terms of the technology, 5G from, uh, from 3G deployment uh, is seen as uh, the one of the goals is to make the technology as open as possible because 4G was uh, strictly closed technology. 5G is uh, stepping first steps to become more closer. You probably have heard uh, the initiatives like Open Core, Open Run for 5G and so on. And one of the functions which is uh, planned in the 5G networks are network data analytic function, which means that 5G core network will have a ability to share network, for example, positioning data that the third application renders. But I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I would avoid the uh, comment how it will happen in real life because there is a lot of sensitivity and so on, and also some technical challenges. But in terms of the vision, uh, 5G as technology is going to become more open and also to share those data. And uh, one more question from my side. In Estonia, there is um, they just launched uh, the first really millimeter way 5G network, but they discovered that there's no end user devices phones in Europe that are you can buy can use this millimeter way. Uh, what's the situation in Latvia? The same. I mean, the uh, uh, only thing uh, that helps us for for uh, session development is that we have a uh, close partner in Monte, which is uh, 5G router vendor, and basically we are uh, doing our research with the routers instead of the uh, home, because we don't have a home router at all. But the uh, United States has, yeah. so, so we are in contact with them, and maybe, maybe they will share their experience as well as they do. Okay, but uh, thank you again, Arnold, for coming and explaining the 5G to us.